Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a 4GB GTX 960 SSC ACX2 graphics card. A very long name I know, and when you consider that SSC stands for Super Super Clocked, it does sound quite unnecessary indeed. Now this card released in 2015 and was actually one of the first 4GB 960s to appear on the market and today I want to see how well it holds up with the latest and greatest titles. This card itself we have taken a look at before, the 2GB variant when paired with an old 8-core Xeon workstation build and we've also had a look back at the 4GB version, a different version that is a couple of years ago too, though we didn't really explore many titles in that video. These days the performance of a 960 sits somewhere between the 1050 and 1050 Ti with a price to reflect that on the used market as well. So I wanted to see just how well this holds up. Now I've also paired this with my Core i5 3450 for a change today because I feel like this is a pretty decent combination and these old i5s can be had now for between 50 and 100 pounds dollars or euros making them very desirable and an ideal pairing I feel for an old card like this. So it's not just about the 960 today but it is also about this budget CPU as well. In fact we'll talk a little bit about that first. This i5 scores over 400 points in Cinebench R15 and should still prove itself very capable. There will be a couple of instances and games whereby it uh, will be running at 100% usage and that's likely in titles like Assassin's Creed for example which rely heavily on CPU cores. Others may just say that it's an unoptimized title and they wouldn't be too far wrong. But without further ado, let's get into it and see just how this budget pairing holds up. First of all we have Fortnite, a very popular title, and here with the high settings we were able to run it at 80 frames per second with our i5 3450 and 8 gigs of 1600 MHz DDR3. Now this card won't spin up the fans won't move until you hit around 60 degrees celsius and i can tell you that at idle we were seeing about 32 degrees under full load after say a couple of hours gaming this thing did reach temperatures of around 70 degrees but it didn't really go that much higher the cooler on this thing although it does look pretty plain pretty boring is actually quite good with its dual fan setup and if you're going to opt for a 960 in 2019 not only would i advise or recommend that you go for this one but i would also have to insist on a four gigabyte version as well just to be able to deal with those higher settings a little bit better of course when i talk about how well a card performs in a certain year i'm not just talking about the release date of course because we are only a month into 2019 but i'm talking about the current state of those games itself for example all of the updates and patches that have led to its current performance in 2019. It isn't always about the date in which the title was released. This video will just assess the GTX 960 4 gigs performance at this point in time with uh, certain games and their respective updates and patches. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Odyssey and here the CPU um, actually proved more of a problem as I said before. Assassin's Creed will run better with more cores. A Ryzen 5 1600, for example, is ideal, and more often than not, you will have a CPU running at 100% usage if you have four cores or less. Now, that's not to say that it was holding the 960 back because that was also maxed out. Um, so, all in all, I feel that this is a pretty decent combination, and we were still seeing respectable frame rates at the medium settings, hovering around 50 FPS on average. Of course, if you want closer to 60, feel free to turn things down to low to achieve that, but here, medium, I think it did pretty well. Interestingly, we ran Far Cry 5, another Ubisoft title, at uh, the high settings on the 4GB 960 and i5, and saw an average of 47 frames per second. Here again it looks like the CPU is holding our card back but interestingly this was somewhat due to recording. I do take the frame rate figures from before I've recorded the gameplay and I can say that the CPU was averaging at around 80 to 90% usage most of the time so it wasn't holding our card back here at all. This is just as good as the card is basically. 47 frames per second with the high settings is nothing to sniff at and again was quite a respectable score. If you want closer to 60 just like Assassin's Creed it's best to turn things down a little bit to say medium or even low. 
The Battlefield 5 footage here also suffered at the hands of my recording software. Um, it seems as though the CPU was recording at 100% usage when in fact, again, it was averaging around 60 to 70%. Um, 63 frames per second was the average with the medium preset here. Nothing changed whatsoever. So in Battlefield 5, it was a pretty decent performance overall. I could happily play the entirety of this game on this setup. This is just one of a few select single player levels, but I can tell you that the performance is very similar throughout. If you're looking to play through the Battlefield 5 campaign, then there are certainly worst setups out there to deal with this title at medium settings. I was very impressed here actually, especially considering we just slapped the game on the medium settings and left it to do its own thing. V-Sync of course was off as well so that we weren't capped at 60 frames per second although I feel that that would be the best thing to do to ensure the smoothest of frame rates. Now another slightly older first person shooter I've been enjoying recently is Call of Duty World War 2. The 4 gig 960 handled that at the high settings with an average of 70 frames per second during our 3 hours of single player gameplay. Again that's a pretty impressive result, turning things up to extra, uh, this game's version of ultra will hinder your frame rate a little bit, but overall you'll still see a pretty decent experience at 1080p resolution. The i5-3450 is certainly holding its own as well. So I think if you're looking to build, say, your very first gaming PC or want something that's not going to be too expensive yet, we'll still handle most of the games out there currently on the market with at least 30 frames per second and decent settings. This combination would be a pretty decent place to start when paired with 8 gigs of RAM as well. Just Cause 4 relies a lot more on the GPU than it does the CPU here. And once again with the higher settings we were averaging 45 frames per second uh, at 1080p resolution. There will be moments when the frame rate drops to the low 30s. But other than that it was a pretty stellar performance throughout. Once again, <laughs> out of fear of repeating myself, um, medium or low settings would be your best bet for 60 frames per second. Though I don't think with a 960, even the 4 gig version, you're going to be able to maintain a solid 60. And because there will be certain frame drops here and there as you make your way across this massive open world. Now I know the can it run crisis meme or question or whatever is like an endless uh source of comedy I, I see it in all of my videos can it run crisis because i never test crisis enough but in all seriousness i really do like to test this game because it still remains a technological marvel to me and it can still put even the newest hardware through its paces if you turn the settings right up and enable eight times msaa or whatever now with the 960 here and the i5-3450, we were seeing at least 60 frames per second, a solid performance here with both of these now pretty budget components. I think both of them did a great job at achieving around 75 frames per second on average with the high settings and any form of AA off. Can it run Crisis? Well, yes, this combination certainly can. Finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Probably the newest of today's titles ran with 40 frames per second at high settings. The 960 will handle most games at high settings with at least 30 frames per second. If I had to summarise this card in one sentence uh, and its performance in 2019. So just know that if you're looking for something that offers decent full HD gaming at a reasonable price, then the 960 is probably one of the better cards out there. It's sort of like the 750 Ti in a way. Uh, in that it is quite widely available on the used market and still seems to produce pretty favourable frame rates. So I think it's done itself pretty well here and in combination with an i5-3430 which has just 4 cores and no hyper threading proves to be a pretty capable combination. Um, a bit more about the i5-3450 and I have to say that during the actual editing of this video it seemed to hold up pretty well too. I believe it was released in 2012 so it itself is a few years old now but it still seems to do pretty well and I think for the 50 to 100 pounds dollars or euros you can find one for it seems to be okay and would certainly be among my choices for a great entry level budget gaming build. With all that said, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Usually I pair a card like this with my Ryzen setup, but 
considering that this and the i5 was a combination I've always wanted to try out, I thought I'd do things a little bit differently today. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Let me know if you're still rocking a 960 in your system. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.